Hello, well, here we are. Let's do this. <laughs> so we're going to make this kimono style wrap. Now, um, if you've got your measurements handy, that is great. Um, if I go too quickly here, what I will do is replay this video and I've got all the steps uh, written down as well so that you can, um, you can go back to it later. So I will try and watch the screen to see if anybody asks any questions. But if I don't get to it, then what I'll do is I'll just repost it and answer everything um, after. So let's go. The first, we'll roll, roll out your uh, sheet of paper. Um, so if you've just got a nice roll of paper, just lay it out and you're going to be working from the edge of your page. So, um, and if you drop yourself down about 15 centimeters from the top of the page, and then we're going to draw this first line and it's going to be a straight line using the edge of the page as your right angle. So you can draw out a nice straight line and that line is going to be that measurement from here. So from the middle of your neck out to the length of your sleeve. OK, so a straight line just from there to there. So draw that line as a straight line out. Um, I'm not sure if you need to see what I'm actually drawing as well. So you're just gonna draw that as a straight line. Then drop yourself down so your next line will come from, so middle of your neck to your bust line. So the measurement from there to your bust line. Actually, if you want to number them as well, so if, if we come back to, to things, or if you need to ask me, then you can ask them by number. So let's put a number one on that first line out and then drop it down to, we call this the drop down number. So from here to here is number two. And then draw yourself out a straight line from the edge of your page. This, which is the number three, which is your bust line divided by four. Now, an easy way to divide by four is to get that. So you've got that bust measurement and then fold your tape measure into quarters. <laughs> you can tell I've done this once or twice before. Fold your tape measure into quarters and then you've got the divide. Well, mine's not that, but anyway. Then you've got the divide by four number. So you come out your bust line divided by four and then drop yourself down from bust to waist. So the next number is to drop yourself down. So we've done number one, number two, number three line. And now number four is the amount from here to here. So drop yourself down to number four. And then the number five line is around your waist divided by four. Do you take measure into quarters so you get that quarter number? Divide that by four, come out to your waist measurement, then drop yourself down waist to hip. And we call that measurement, the one that you've dropped down is number six. So just put your six in the middle of the page there. And then number seven is hip divided by four and come out. So then you've got these lines here, 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 here. So, the next thing we're going to do is come back up. If you go actually from that number seven, so the bottom line, join that up to number five line. So draw just a straight line. So you're, you're drawing a line up from the hip to your waist. That's just a, sorry, a diagonal line coming up. Then we go to number three which was the bust line and number five then if you put a, a line halfway between these two so and we'll call that one number six seven and we call that one number eight so halfway between those two lines draw a straight line out and that is where you're going to start a curve. So come from number five and draw. So touching on the number five line and once you get to that number eight, start to curve your way out. 
and that's why if you've got a curve ruler then you could curve it and you're just curving to the edge of the page so once you've touched number eight you're curving out to the edge all the way to the edge so that's creating this sleeve can you see you're creating this sleeve so it's past your waist up and out in this curve line okay so we've got that then let's come up to the top so right at the top of your page if you come in so come in from the edge so this straight line the first number one straight line come in I done uh, about 13 centimeters from the edge and what's that what that is doing is creating this gap here you're creating this gap from here to here and then we're going to drop down to the V. So let's go in a diagonal line, down, down, down. Okay, so you want to create from the edge there a diagonal line. You're starting at line one, going past line three, and down. So you want to be sort of past this bust line but not yet to your waist so uh, a bit up from your waist say four centimeters above that waist line okay sorry not the waist line the number eight line that we did halfway between the bust and the waist so if you come down four centimeters above that number eight line here okay so you've now got the basic shape the only next line that we do is go back up to the top so I'm going to go down here go back up to the top and where you've got this line you want to do a di diagonal up in the air. So that is creating this going upwards. So you've got a nice big kimono style um, sleeve at the top here. And that goes up in the air. Then if you just add some seam allowance, so just put about two centimeters around your edge so you've got a bit of seam allowance in there and a little bit of ease as well. So pop that around the edge, then cut it out and your shape should look like this. OK, so it's going to come out like this. So cut out your paper all around the edges. And then we're going to go to the, get your fabric. And lay your fabric on the fold. So we just we've just made the front and what we'll do is when we're cutting so you might want some tailor's chalk here as well so when you're cutting we create this as a front and a back so the front you can cut against the edge out the way so you want to leave yourself some space because the diagonal line okay 
So the diagonal line that we've done for the neckline, we want to carry that on because that's going to make the wrap. So this, even though the fabric's on the fold, this doesn't need to be on the fold. It's the back that's going to get cut on the fold side. So there, here I've got my raw edges on the edge here. And I've got enough pattern. And you see that I've laid that and then I'm going to carry on this line to keep going out. And you could create a chalk mark there if you'd like to carry on that line. And that is going to make the wrap. Okay, so carry this line down and then the rest you can just cut out as normal. So if you want to, you could do it with your tailor's chalk or just do it with a pencil. You won't see it. Pencil coming down because you're going to cut around there. Now, if you prefer to pin or um, if you like to pin or use weights, however you like to cut out, go for it. So you're cutting around the edge, but you've added this extra bit for the wrap onto the fabric okay and you could make a mark on your pattern as well so carry on this line carry on line here and for the front pattern you'd want to want right front cut two and for the back you're going to cut one on fold and here would be your fold. And we just use that as a straight line up when we cut that on the fold. So if you get cutting, so we're cutting out all the way around here. Around, around, around. I'm being very rough with my cutting because I'm trying to be quick. <laughs> so around, I've got the edge of my sleeve. And this is just single. So this will be a nice sort of summary. Just if you cut it out of some light cotton fabric, this will be nice summary wrap. And I can show you how to do it lined in another video. I will put one up and so then you'd cut it all again and we'd make it lined. So that, can you see how I've cut that? Okay, so I've added to the extra, just carried on that line. Okay, so that's my front two pieces. Now to create the back, I'm going to pop it on the fold which is here so this is the top and I'll just carry that so this is the top line one at the top here my fold line is the center there and this is the sleeve and around from the sleeve it's quite hard to see there i will post all these instructions in text form as well okay so i'm going around the edge leaving this part on the fold so i just keep carrying on that diagonal line but I don't go into the V, okay, because I want this for my back. Can you see I've left that V like that and around. And around. 
to the bottom. So now I have three pieces. I've got my back cut on the fold and my two front. Hi. <laughs> and now the last thing you need is, so I've got two pieces, all right? So that is going to be there. And I've got my back on the fold, okay? So the last thing that you'll need is to create a belt to hold it all together. So just cut a long strip as long as you like because you might want to make it into a nice like kimono style big I don't know a big bow or something or you just might want to put it in a tie so I've just cut a long piece nice and thick okay so nice and thick what I'll let you know what measurement I've made it the thickness I've made it it's over 20 it's about 25 centimeters in width this is and the length so the width now the length I've done it just so it ties around like this if you want it longer then just cut yours longer and join up pieces if you need to but that piece is long enough for me so shall we sew <laughs> Okay, I really hope that that has made sense, uh, the pattern. If not, it was, sorry, it was a bit hurried. Um, but I will, I will post up the instructions. I've got it all, I've got it all written down. Um, so I will post up those, um, those instructions as well, because I know I tend to race on ahead. So, um, so I've got my back on the fold, which is one piece. I now don't need that pattern anymore. But what's a, what is a good thing to do with your pattern is to make as many notes on it as possible. So write all that stuff on there. I'll give you, I will post up all, all of my notes as well so that you can write on there what you've done, how long you've done your sleeve, that you cut the back on the fold and all of that type of thing. Just so that next time when you go to pick it up, just I've done this myself. When I go to pick up a pattern and then I think it was wonderful at the time and I think, oh goodness, what was that for? And what did I do again? I remember it turned out brilliantly, but I don't, I don't really remember what I actually did. So it's so good to make notes on your pattern. So good. Right. Uh, I'll put this aside for now, which is my wrap. Uh, sorry, the tie wrap bit. And I've got my two fronts and my back. And I shall start by doing some pinning before I get my machine up here. So I'm going to put right sides together. Here we are, my nice back piece. Then I pop this one on top. Right sides together, matching up those sleeves. So I pop that on top, I'm going to do this again. I know it's hard to see because it's all stripey, but can you see an angle here? That's, that's my wrap part and my sleeve to sleeve. Pop some pins in there. And we pop our pins in. So if I'm going to be sewing, I want to put my pins in vertically. If I'm going to be sewing along that line, then I put my pins in the other way so if that's say if that's I'm sewing along like that then I put my pins vertical to my sewing line so perpendicular to your sewing line and pinning the whole way around so this is under your arm here and this is the top of your arm at the top here pop those pins in and then I can lay the other side again with right sides together here's my waist under my sleeve pop those pins in there now if you have an overlocker or if you zigzag however you choose to edge your um pieces you could edge them all first I'm not going to go through that because just for time I'm not going to 
I'm just putting this together just like you sort of would put a twirl together really. So you might want to just stitch them up with a tacking stitch and so that you can be happy with the fit and how it's sitting. But let's get it all put together so you've got the main idea of how it's done. Then um, you can always go back and do some nice finishing um, afterwards. So first of all, we're going to stitch along this top line, which is the line that goes from here to here. Then we'll stitch around, which is this that goes around. So around there and around the top, around this top line and around this curve. Okay, over to the sewing machine. So we've left ourselves two centimetres, so let's, let's do about a centimetre seam allowance, one to 1.5 seam allowance, because you've got two centimetres to play with. So that is for a bit of ease. Any measurements were slightly out, that gives you a bit of room to play with. And let's go. Start with doing your backwards and around. Always starting with backwards and forwards now you might have just noticed that I did go over a pin and that's the great thing about um, about putting your pins in perpendicular to the sewing line because it's sometimes that you'll miss them as you're sewing along but also it's a lot easier to pull pins out as you go if they're facing they're not stuck in your sewing line and they're facing the other way so I'm going all the way down to the bottom and then I do a backwards to finish. So that's one of my underarm, one of my underarm seams done. Let's go to my other underarm seam. for live but um, I'm just going all the way around the other underarm seam and I do my backwards to finish okay now these top lines so that leads up and to this this point where the wrap starts and it's an angular line because we we push that line upwards so it would go just give that extra niceness extra um, uh, kimono style sleeve on the edge backwards and forwards to finish gives you a nice locked in stitch and then this last line along pins out uh -huh. and now is the time to see if it actually worked so pins out we do this in my after school club pins in pins out pins in pins out it's a little joke we do with the kids because they feel like that they're taking pins out and putting pins in all the time um they'll get used to it <laughs> Okay, so now I've got an in, it's inside out, so I'll turn it through to the right way. Pop it on. Can you see that this line is following down? And this line is following down. Oh, Karen, I'm gonna, hello, I'm gonna have to make you one of these now, aren't I? But in time for summer, goodness, I know you like rap. <laughs> Hello. Um, right, so we've got this arm um, coming out and then this wraps around. Now, I think that I could have actually a bit more wrap, so I'll write in morning. <laughs> so I'll actually make on my pattern um, 
I'd make this a bit more to come round. So, but that's okay because this is all trial and error and you can add more if you like, but this is quite nice. I still will wear this one as it is, but I know that in future I'd probably add more to go around and more to go around inside. So now this is working. What I'd like to make next is the wrap to go around that will hold it together. And of course you could add fastenings and things if you like. Yes, I think so. Especially for beach, it would be nice with more wrap. So we're coming around and you could add fastenings in here actually as well. And especially if you've got it fully lined, it'd be really nice to have fastenings and actually you could see the inside, um, um, you could see the inside color, you know, do it in like nice colors and things too. But for this, this is how we'll, um, this is just, you know, for our first one. So this will make our, our tie to go around the middle. So take this, I take it off. Now I know that it's worked well. So I've got the back, the back just sits nice and flat, whereas the front is where all the wrap is happening. So can you see this coming down and along here? And that and you can just carry that on in your cutting but do make a do make a note on your pattern that is most important that you note know all these things down so go straight back to your pattern make a note i'd like to add more links you know to the wrap and you could even actually make that into a really nice detail sort of floating down on either side um but now you know the basic shape you can create all these extra bits because you, you've tried it once so you can keep going with you know your own details and things as well um, and then for the um, belt, you've got your long piece of fabric. So you lay that out nice and long and you fold it with right sides together. Pop some pins the whole way along the length. Again, doing that perpendicular um, pinning. So you're pinning your vertical against your horizontal line. And then you come to the edges here. So if you see the edge, I like to make mine in an angular point, just because I think that's a nice detail to have on a belt. So I cut that into an angular shape, if you can see. And again, on the other side to an angle. And you might want to use Taylor's chalk again so because what you're going to do is stitch the whole way around but leave a gap in the middle somewhere so that's where you're going to turn it all through so if you want to create a, a little use your tailor's chalk or a pencil to leave a gap in the on on one part and you're going to be turning it all through that gap so the the width of your um the, your gap is is enough for you to get your hand in there and turn it through so i always say a few a few fingers apart really so just making sure you don't want it too wide because you don't want to have too much stitching showing on the outside but also you want it wide enough that you can push it through so you'll get used to how how wide you actually would like yours so i'm just going to start at the edge and stitch the whole way around and with this one my seam allowance I'm just going to use the edge of my foot against the edge of the fabric because we don't need to worry too much about um, our uh, you know what what we've left in the pattern for this because this is just for a belt so I'll start with my backwards and forwards as usual going around the edge when I get to the corner I stop turn the turn the wheel towards me so the needle now is holding on to the fabric and then I just lift the presser foot and turn and carry on with that stitching and once I get to the point where I'm going to leave my gap I'm going to stop you could do backwards so you don't lose your stitching actually so I did a little bit of backwards now I leave my gap back in backwards and forwards down all the way to the end all the way 
I went quite a lengthy one, so I'm going to keep going. Again, perhaps this isn't great for live TV, but that's okay. <laughs> if you're sewing along, then um, at least you, you're doing it at the same pace as me. And you can, of course, go slower. I'm just going quickly so that we can, um, yeah, so that you can see your next stage. Again, I've stopped at the edge. I put my needle in, so turn to the wheel towards me, needle in, lift up the presser foot, turn, and I'm going back down that angle. And backwards and forwards to finish. Cut my threads, take any pins out. Now, any corners, you want to cut a little bit off the corner, up to the stitch line, not over it. You don't want to break any stitches. But if you want a nice sharp point, you just cut those edges off. So the points at the end, I just get rid of any excess fabric. So I cut the edge and cut the edge. And then you go to your hole Go back to the hole that you left earlier, if I can see it. <laughs> there it is. And you turn it all through. You could turn your iron on at this stage because you'll want to um, press it flat once you've turned it through. So turn your iron on, pull all of this channel through. And then to get your um, points nice and sharp, so you've already done the trimming of the edges, then use something. So there's, we have all sorts of utensils in our kitchen that are actually good for, <laughs> good for sewing and good for sort of poking out corners and things. Um, and um, so, but something blunt, don't, don't use your scissors because it's so easy to push through and then you make a hole in it if you use the edge of your scissors. And I know that as dressmakers we do tend to use scissors but just because they're handy, but do get something else. The edge of a pencil, I have um, an abundance of chopsticks in the pink bus because we're always trying to push out corners or um, especially at Christmas time when we made the stag heads, trying to get all of the antlers out for the stag heads. So there were loads of chopsticks um, pushing out corners. So now we've got this nice long belt and if you press that flat, so get out all of, get the seams nice and flat and then you can sew up the hole, okay? So get that nice and press flat and then just go back and, and really delicately on your machine sew up the hole or use a hand stitch. If you can do blind stitching with a hand stitch, do that just for really nice finishing. So hand stitch it up or machine sew but just nice and neatly, nice and close to the edge just so that you can't see it. Um, so that's all, that's all pressed nice and flat um, and do the edging on, on that. So that is all you'll need for your belt. Now you can get, um, you can get, you know, more, more, um, you can, you can get better with the belt. You could add a buttonhole so it slides through. Um, you could do all sorts of, of bits on there just to really sort of, you know, make the finishing lovely or you use it as a tie and it just ties and that's just nice as well. I like to do a, really really long one so I can have a nice a nice big bow just for extra extravagance but that's just me you could just use it as a tie or you can create a buttonhole in there and then the edge will slide through the buttonhole so we've more or less finished all we want to do now is get the get the edging so it's the, these nice finishes that we'd like so this is probably the most time consuming part of the whole process, but it's really worth it. Um, when, if, if you do another one lined, which I will put up the process of how to line it, um, you just cut the whole thing again, really, and you just stitch it together and pull it all through. But I will show you that because sometimes it's a bit tricky. Um, with that, then you won't need to do any edging because it's, it's all put together and, and nicely lined. But if you're doing this one, which is which is in lighter, which would be lighter, good for the beach, um, you will fold 
the whole way around you want to fold your edges and use an iron as well so fold it once and once again so one centimeter fold and then fold another one centimeter and putting your pins in now this is a really important time to put your pins in so the the other way that you're going to so perpendicular to your sewing line so you want to sew along that line so the pins aren't in your way so pinning pinning and you can you can finger press some people do finger pressing so really pushing that down hard it depends on your fabric some fabrics just are a bit too bouncy and they don't they don't take to finger pressing whereas finger pressing is just pushing it down and then popping a pin in i like to iron a nice hot iron there um can really get those nice and flat down and then once you've pinned the whole way around these edges then you just do really carefully because this stitching you will see so a lovely stitch the whole way around the edge and then you'll also do the edges of your sleeves like that as well so fold once one centimeter fold again one centimeter and pinning the whole way around and once you've done the edging that is all done so you have a nice little kimono wrap beach ready the sun's shining today so can you see this is can you see this is overlapping here and we could really sorry i've still got the pins in here but you could really go to town with um with adding extra on the edge here and actually that might add nice detail to the bottom so you could have like an uneven um, hemline around here that's quite nice and floaty and then you have your belt you could um, you could add a fastening a button or something in there or you can just so you could wear it open if you like or the belt Oops. to hold it all together Mine hasn't been pressed, so it's bouncing all over the place. And down and done. Well, we did it. I did it. <laughs> I wonder if any of you have sewn along as well. Um, but of course, I, I will share the video and I'll put all the instructions down to, to make it easier to follow the pattern at the start as well. Um, and I really appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. And yes, well, this looks like a start of things to come. I'll do some more live makes with you. And um, yes, I'd love to hear your comments or to see your makes from today. And a big happy birthday to the pink bus. So I think that we'll be having a celebration with some cake soon. So um, do wherever you are, have cake in celebration of the pink bus turning one. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Thank you.